Listen, going back to Canada, um, to Toronto, like locally, what do you think is going to hit next? Recently, I just a couple of days ago, I read the report for real estate, and to my surprise, we hit the freaking record in terms of home sales and condo sales in Ontario, in Toronto area. Right. It's like up to 13, or actually 16%, I think, or more. There's like an official report on that. And I was like, okay, so what's the reason for that? And everyone's like, well, it's because, well, the, the articles that I read it, because everyone's kind of was, they, they were all at home. Everyone had like too much time on their hands and they were like trying to like make sure to put their money somewhere that is actually tangible in terms of like instead of a stock market to go into the housing and invest there and just like buy condos as soon as possible. At the same time, I'm calling my friend. It's like asking, like telling like, hey, you guys come over with like my friend and his wife. Like, yo, like let's chill. He's a real estate and, uh, agent. Sure. Uh, and also he says like, well, yeah, cool. Uh, I'm like, what are you up to? He's like, well, you know, the, the market is actually, the pre-construction is really not good. Like he's giving me this information that in Toronto right now, the pre-construction market is really down, like to the point where my guy is uh, going to drive Uber to get extra money. So I don't understand. This is this weird, like the report for the month of July is record high. But at the same time, like for the pre-construction, no one's buying it. What do you think, man? I think it's interesting. I think it's hard to make a judgment this early, but I think it's gonna. I think a lot of the businesses are gonna set a set the stage for what happens next. I mean, I think if a lot of these businesses stay open downtown and say, you know, we're sticking to our guns, we all want to be right on Front Street, right on Bay Street, then maybe it'll stabilize a little bit, and people will still want those downtown condos. But if not, it'll mm-hmm. be interesting. I think. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's People uh, may say, hey, look, there's no point in living in Toronto. Let's go live in London. Let's go live in Windsor. Mm-hmm. Telecommute to work every day. I mean, it depends, I think, what happens in terms of a lot of the big employers, what they decide to do. I'm really starting to look at the Hamilton area, an area like a little bit outside of, because uh, we talked about it last time. I feel like living in downtown right now, it's a little bit overpriced, especially if you're living in, if you're working from home. Oh, sure. You look at what you get. Yeah. Versus what you could get for some, like how much the average home price in London is like seven hundred thousand dollars, and what's mm-hmm. seven hundred thousand dollars going to get you downtown Toronto? Not really much, and mm-hmm. especially in the a Corona small, in the Corona condo, pandemic, yeah. when I was at home visiting my family, I was like, I'm so glad we have a, a backyard, and then all these people downtown in condos, yeah, can't even go outside, and they've got this little square that they can step out on. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure, man. Man, that's crazy. Look a little more critically in terms of what they get for their money but are you are you at all in the market right now what do you think personally like do you want to at, at some point invest in some sort of a property in uh, in canada in ontario right now i want to wait and see in terms of my career i'm still kind of at a growth stage mm-hmm. I, I don't know where i'm going to be working in five six seven years i don't know what mm-hmm. field accounting or finance to some degree but where for who mm-hmm. it depends i stabilize my life a little bit and i think that i want to see the housing market stabilize a little bit too and i mean Look at how much has changed in like less than a year. But you look at how long a mortgage is, it's like 20. <laughs> yeah. Before you get into that five, six years before you can renew your mortgage, you want to see, okay, is the economy actually at somewhere where I can make a reliable estimate of where it's going to be in the future. You know, that's what, I've, what I'm thinking as well right now. Like I really wanted to buy something, but I want to buy it smartly where I don't even have to live there, but at least rent it out to make sure that we have some cash flow at least. Um, so I'm observing, I'm looking, and I'm, I'm definitely not as bullish on downtown sure i don't know i don't even i think, I think land's always going to have an inherent value I and mean, there's always going to be exactly. a large population density down here so it's always going to have value but is it going to have that massive value seven hundred eight hundred thousand dollars for a condo that's average that we've been seeing who knows the reporter also said that the rent prices are going down exactly so, so, so that's another thing for two reasons first Immigration, yep. the students Down. and uh, the temporary people who live here in Canada but will move away. And so, therefore, they have to rent. They're not here because they're not immigrating here because we have a border close. That's the first reason. And the second reason, we still have a bunch of projects here. Go ahead and open it. It's fine. Uh, let's hear that. Yeah. Good now. Oh, there you go. That was, that was a clean one. The second reason is we have all this freaking development all over the place. Downtown, there's like one construction right there bunch of constructions right there you can see the cranes there the supply of condominiums is still super high with yep. no like so that's well, why it's all based on what it was three exactly. four years ago and they have to finish it seismic shifts can happen quick sometimes 
Exactly. So I feel like in the at least in the shorter term, maybe in the next year, the rents definitely not going to go up and definitely going to go down at some point as well. And that's the that's the eternal question too. I mean, is it? I mean, everyone thinks owning a condo is sexy and having someone or like, yeah, I own this place. But at some point, yeah. you have to do your present value analysis and saying like, look, if I if I buy this house, I'm going to put 20, 30 percent down. Mm-hmm. That's cash I can't have. That's cash I can't invest. How much more am I really paying to rent? And over the long term, would I be better to invest that money uh, that I would otherwise use in a down payment? And there's also the peace of mind, like you're not having to worry about maintenance to such an extent or you know exactly. if you don't like it you can move somewhere else you don't the have flexibility to worry about property taxes this is how much you owe this is how much you owe property taxes and the freaking condo fees 500 yep. bucks per month right now like i was researching that like here in downtown you don't just get a mortgage and every month you're paying back your principal and your yeah, interest yeah, like yeah. oh no you got you property have a bunch taxes, of other stuff on top of that yeah all this other stuff i mean it's pretty much like you're getting a mortgage and also renting on the side <laughs> Exactly. It's ridiculous. Um, so that's that's where I'm like, okay, maybe I need to reconsider. Either it's too early for me or I need to strategize and see, how about Hamilton? How about Mississauga? How about, you know, other towns, London or Guelph or whatever, you know? This, this, these are all the cities that I know by heart. That's sure. That's the limit of. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. You hit all the big ones. I mean, yeah. places like Peterborough, you don't need to worry about name, name dropping those. Um, <laughs> But it depends on what your personal comfort level is too. Like one of one of my friends, he owns his house and uh-huh. he's a single guy, mm-hmm. um, and rents out you know basement yeah. and one other room and hats half his mortgage right there. So I mean, hey, he's got an ass up, but he's also making some income. And that's how he plays for his down payment. I mean, s- strategies. You know what I was thinking too is like, I wonder how we're gonna go further. What if like shit is really gonna hit the fan and we will go wave two, some spark of like outbreak and everyone's like, okay, you know what? cities are definitely not an option and like i'm thinking like okay what about alberta everyone's kind of like area there i mean my family is in london they're kind of more on the outskirts like they kind of live between the outskirts of london and more so uh like between the city and the country and Mm -hmm. there's not too many run out there because your neighbors aren't exactly next door they're a few hundred meters but then if you think about it again i i don't know what's happening there right now in terms of prices but you can say okay how about this i have this Seven hundred thousand that I was gonna invest in some sort of a condo or a house in like Hamilton. Sure. But with all this stuff that's happening right now, there's a crop of like a piece of land for three hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars or whatever in in Alberta, maybe even cheaper, depends on where. Maybe I should just go get it there, make sure there's an internet and electricity and and and, and water, and just sit there and you know close to some town. I honestly have no idea how Alberta looks like or whatever. But I'm a just, lot of uh, fields. Yeah, it was just like somewhere next to a small town in the field. I just need the internet and all of that. And just like, isn't that attractive? And then I can just like chill there and work from from, from there. And it is. If you can telecommute. I mean, like... You if you can at, telecommute. I mean, you, and you a lot of companies do it. Toronto. I mean, how much are you paying for your land? A lot. Mm-hmm. How much are you really spending on the house? Right? So if you have a million dollars that you can spend on a house in Toronto. I mean, most of that's going to a land. Your house isn't really going to be that nice. Now, let's say you give it the same million dollars and say, hey, go live out in Lethbridge, Alberta. Mm-hmm. You can get a big plot of land for not that much money. So the actual house you can have yourself is way bigger. So I mean, yeah. again, it all depends on telecommuting and the nature of your job. But it's not unreal. You that, you're going to get a pretty nice mansion. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of workplaces that are actually doing this. Like they're, they're basically telling their employees right now here in Canada, they basically say, hey, you know what? Things are not going get, getting any better. We can't do this on the open space in terms of the startups and all that, how the offices are laid out. We're going to go 100% remote because we tested it out for three months and it works. So, you know what? We decided to do this whole thing forever. Yeah. And if you're not Facebook paying like, did that. sky high rent on Bay Street, how many more employees can you hire with that money that can go and expand your business? Exactly because it'd be a good thing for the. I mean, granted, all the real estate firms are not going to be loving that, but mm-hmm. you know, depending on the nature of your business, it could be a good thing. 